We're joined by Jeff Oberg from Elbit. So Jeff, give us a quickie bio of your aviation experience. I flew F-18s for about uh, 16 years, all, all variants, F-18 A through, uh, through G, if you will. I've got helmet mounted display time, several operational deployments, a little bit of Top Gun time, and, and um, just happy to be here at Hook. During my career, when you were talking about things that assisted in aircrew SA, the HUD, A7s, Tomcats had HUDs, A6s did not, S3s did not. And then we had night vision devices, the legacy Hornet Bubba's, had helmet mounted NVGs, and we thought that was a big deal, but that was it. So these days, when we're talking about things that supplement, that improve situational awareness, we're in a whole different world. Yeah. Where it's going today, I think, is, is holistic situational awareness, right? And holistic situational awareness, unlike what we had back then, which was a radar, really, I mean, a, a, a radar, some, some basic EW queuing systems. Uh, uh, now there's multiple sensors around the aircraft uh, that include, I mean, obviously include the radar, but, uh, but very, very complicated EW systems. Uh, there's visual systems and offboard sensors as well, right? So it's not just your, your information that you need to uh, uh, react and respond to, but it's offboard sensors and offboard information that's coming in. And all this needs to get fed up into your eyeballs and into your brain so that you can make those decisions. Much, much more complicated picture than certainly what we were looking at, I mean, 20 years ago, but even 10 years ago, much different. And I think where we're seeing the Navy go, in the Air Force, but the Navy go uh, uh, into this next generation of fighters is just going to complicate that picture even further. As you're speaking, I'm thinking again of a HUD. So in the Tomcat, we thought it was a big deal that you had a flight path marker and a diamond over the thing that the Rio had locked. Right. But again, as you speak, I realize how dated that, that paradigm is in terms of Intel fusion, let's call it. Right? And as you said, it's not about more information, it's about the right information that's actionable for the aircrew at any given time. So we've done some episodes about the F-35 before, and we talk about what I call the space ghost mode, where you have cameras all over the airplane, or sensors all over the airplane, you can kind of see through the airplane. It's not just a, the limits of the gimbals of a radar or a HUD, now it's 360 and off-board sensors as well. What is it that we have technology-wise that's, that's sort of bleeding edge, that's feeding all that stuff into a visor and making it something that the pilot can react to or that's actionable information at any given time? It's not, it's not necessarily getting more information. It's getting information in, in a manner in which you can, you can absorb that, right? So like you said, the F-35, multiple sensors around the aircraft. I mean, it, it, it fits that description we just discussed. Leveraging some of, the, some of what you're seeing in the gaming industry these days, right? Augmented reality, uh, information on demand concepts, so it's not there all the time in front of you. It's absorbable, it's actionable, it's there when you need it. Uh, those are some of the concepts that we're bringing in. But with that, you get the technological changes, wider field of view displays, uh, full color displays, crisper displays. That allows you to see that information and again, absorb it and act on it quicker. Um, now, a piece of this too, it's not just helmet mounted displays. It's the heads down, heads up, and, the, and the, the synergies between those two, right? So you've got your heads down information showing you that God's eye view. Now you bring that heads up perspective and it might even be some of that same information you're seeing, you're just seeing in a different perspective. You're able to look out and now visualize the entire world around you because as you, as you look out, you actually see what your, what your God's eye view is presenting to you. So let's just use F-35 as the poster child right. for this conversation. So part of, again, what we're talking about is information in your visor, and then the way that our frequent guest Paco Benitez talked about it is that there's like an iPad, glass, touch screen. Now the trick is taking that information as you raise your head, not dumping that information, right. making it sort of seamless between heads in and heads out. The two working together. Okay, because um, currently they don't necessarily. That you're right. Currently, they don't necessarily. Now, okay. now they, they repeat each other in many ways, but they don't necessarily work together. And that, that's an integrated cockpit concept, right? 
and, and again, holistic situational awareness is, is kind of what, what we've keyed on is, is trying to drive that solution set. Talking specifically about whether or not it's available in the fleet today, I think the F-35 helmet has that technology and really was the breakthrough capability in bringing out that holistic situational awareness. But the next step, the integration of that piece, the wider field of view, adding in some of those augmented reality types of concepts for that symbology set, information on demand, those are, that's the next phase of where we're going to. The other piece of this too is, is bringing in that weight, right? And, and having a helmet in a system that can be worn uh, over the hours and hours that pilots are flying these days. The Navy is moving ahead with the helmet replacement on the F-18s today. That helmet replacement is helping the F-18s break into that kind of next generation barrier. Make sure I get my acronyms right here. So correct. Shehemix is the current standard for Super Hornet. That's correct. Right? So how heavy is that compared to an HGU-55? Is that like way heavier? Because you know we were all about, back in the day, six and a half Gs, seven Gs, Wearing an HGU-33 was heavy, yep. so we're like, you need this lightweight HGU-55, and then you mounted NVGs on it, and all of a sudden it's getting heavy again. You bet. Now what are we talking about with a Gehemix capable helmet into F-35, into what we're talking about with these other capabilities? In my mind, it's not helmet weight per se, it's it's headborne weight, right? And, and first you start with the head. So you, like you said, you're, you're fighting at seven, eight, nine Gs, head weighs, Let's just, for simple math, let's just say 10 pounds at 8 Gs, 9 Gs, that's 80, 90 pounds just to start with. You add on a helmet, that's going to add some weight. Now you add on display apparatus on top of that, that adds additional weight. Now part of the problem too is not just the weight but where it's located. So if it's located in the back versus forward, it's going to tend to move the head back or forward. You prefer to have that weight centered directly above the head. Well, because that's the other thing, but another cool thing, Jeff, that I, I, I look at those helmets Aesthetically, they look ugly to me, for one thing, right? I prefer an HGU-55 or the HGU-33 here in the channel logo. But you see like this bug thing. So is that, where is the center of gravity on that helmet? Is it is it biased forward? Are you always feeling like your head's tilting forward with that? Right, so when, you, when you're flying Jehemix, you're, you're right, the, the center of gravity of the Jehemix is, is primarily sitting on the forehead. And there's a small moment arm out there, right, because the, the the display apparatus sits about an inch or so off the helmet, so there's a small moment arm, and that adds that adds the overall forces to the neck. Now, think about NVGs back when you flew, that was actually worse. The NVGs are heavier than the, than the display apparatus, and they sit further out. So you have that moment arm where, you're, where your head and your neck are, are actually holding up uh, more weight than, than otherwise it would be. So what we've done with the next generation of helmets, which are designed from scratch, and, and, and frankly, the design criteria at the, at the get-go was build the lightest helmet we could build. So you start, you design from scratch with the with the idea of driving the weight out and design that helmet to have a very centered gravity, right? Okay, yep. So close as you can to the neck joint to keep that apparent feel of weight as minimal as possible. Reduce those moment arms and reduce that overall neck force. Because we designed from scratch, we're also able to leverage some of the, that, I'll just say, latest technology, right? So the, so the latest display technology that's available. And now that, that allows us to get into the very wide field of view, the uh, 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 full color, and, and be able to actually enable those augmented reality and uh, uh, synthetic vision types of, types of concepts that are out there. Let's talk about a mission scenario. So let's say it's a very complicated strike mission with F-35s or Super Hornets, whatever is the best example of, of this technology. So it's going to be a, we got to go through a SAM threat and an air-to-air -air threat into a hit the target. So what am I seeing that a raw gear and HUD doesn't provide me now. I put it in the context of, of old days versus new days. So back when I was flying, uh, say into Iraq and Afghanistan, you know the, the, the threats were there, but relative today, I'll, I'll say they were minimal. So if, if you know if you wanted to avoid a Sam Wes or AAA, you could actually imagine having a threat dome. And I just, you know, I see a threat dome, I just don't, I don't fly through that threat dome. But that, you didn't see that, you did planning to avoid it, right? You, you did route planning. You bet. So yeah. you, couldn't, you couldn't see so that. So in real time, you don't know if you're in a SAM envelope or not. You got it. Okay. You got it. Now you're guessing, and I, yeah. you're, making, you're making educated guesses based, based know, off of what you learned at Top Gun. a but, sophisticated yeah. mobile SAM threat on, you know, environment. You bet. That's unsat, what we're talking about. You right? bet. 
Now today with the sensors that are able to detect that and bring that information in, not just heads down, but heads up, you're able to bring that information up. But the problem is it's not one SAM, it's not two, it's, you know, it's hundreds of SAMs out there that cover the sky. So you imagine if I had threat domes everywhere, if I look out, all I see is red. Can't so see like that. mission abort. Right. right. Can't get there from here. Now you start looking at negative space, uh, uh, different types of symbology sets that instead of showing you what's there, I'm showing you what you need. And what you need is maybe not to see the threat domes. Maybe it's to see the, the, the flight path that I need to fly through there. Okay. Maybe it's to note that there is a threat here, that this one's active, this one's now active. And instead of seeing small symbols, I can get a visual depiction of what it looks like. It's easier for the mind to absorb, the eye to see, mind absorb, and you know immediately what uh, what you're doing and why you're doing it. So that's a huge distinction, what you just said, right? Very, it's not just huge, yeah. this mass of data and information that's just thrown at you. You bet. It's actionable against the mission that you're doing. You got it. So that, that's the complete difference between current and what you guys are working on. You got it. Fifth gen speed is life. You know, it's all, it's all about uh, 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 stealth, and it's all about going very, very fast, right? Well, not Tomcat fast, but okay. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Sixth gen information is life. It's all about uh, uh, having more information than the threat and being able to act on that. So how far away are we? from having this capability? Or is this just part of the sixth gen planning and it's just folded into the entire you know, system of systems sort of right. architecture? Well, if you're talking systems of systems, you know, th those, those efforts are underway. When you're talking about that next generation aircraft, be it in the, again, in the Navy or the Air Force, those efforts are underway today. And that next generation aircraft will be, you know, fundamentally that battle manager out there, right? need the systems to be able to help the air crew manage that battle space. Again, looking back at the F-18, like you said, they had Jehemix, and they've had Jehemix for, what, 15, 20 years now. Well, the next phase is iJehemix, improved Jehemix, that's leveraging CEVS's uh, zero-G helmet. Now, in the F-18, it, it, it's going to enable new mission sets and enable new things, but you take that same concept and drive it towards the next generation fighter, and now you're able to get that full capability, dispersed aperture systems, you know, enhanced EW systems, the information that's coming from all your offboard sensors. It's really, it's a critical part of the holistic situation awareness, which is both heads down and heads up. And it's part of that overall decision-making process that frankly, I never had to do, right? I, you know, you, you and I still flew the plane and they're, they're gonna fly the plane. But, but the focus of that mission set is, is on, on managing the battle space. Well, this is exciting, Jeff. Hopefully we'll talk to you again soon when some of this stuff evolves and, and we have more, to, uh, more details maybe that we can fill in the blanks yeah. here. Listen, Ward, I really appreciate you having me on and, and I look forward to the continued conversation. All right, well, thank you. Thanks. And it's great to be here at Hook. All right. All right, that'll do it for this episode and uh, we'll be doing other stuff from Hook, so stay tuned.